That is so cool. <laughs> In this video, the mountain scooter will come to life, but that is gonna be a lot of work. Basically, the current setup isn't gonna cut it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, so the carburetors are one of the big problems. So we have another set of carburetors over there, and they're quite a bit larger, um, just physically, not really necessarily in terms of how much they flow. But anyway, uh, they should be more tunable, they're flat slides, and there's not a lot of extra space in there. So that's a problem. Um, I'm gonna need to make more space for the carburetors. This is just not gonna work. I didn't really foresee that being a problem, but this chain, it's two really tight bends and it's such a short piece of chain, it gets really hot. Even with a O-ring sealed chain, it's well lubricated in just a matter of like seconds of running it at high speed, it just starts smoking. So that's never gonna last long term. My best plan is to take the original chain case from the snowmobile and find a way to mount it right there. Um, I didn't do that originally because it just seemed like more work, which it will be. <laughs> but it'll be worth it because it means it'll, um, well, it, first of all, it's got better bearings that are oil bath, and then the whole chain system will be oil bath so it won't overheat. Um, but to do that, I'm probably gonna have to like, basically redo everything back here. The chain case will go right about there. Uh, hopefully I can get it inboard a little bit, but um, that'll keep everything lubricated. It'll also move this back and down a little bit um, and get it out of entirely out of the way of the uh, carburetors. Um, and to make that happen, what I'm gonna have to do is get a longer drive belt because it changes the distance between the two clutches. So that should solve basically all of the problems without having to completely redo everything. Are you ready to see these shenanigans? I'm uh, stepping up my North Idaho lathe game. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is gonna be the uh, secondary drive shaft for the scooter. It's actually the original drive shaft for the snowmobile that drove the track. Um, so it fits into the chain case on that end. This end, it's too long and I need um, both a carrier bearing like this and whatever, a sprocket, one of the sprockets to fit on it. So I need to lathe it down to one inch. Well, obviously we don't have a lathe <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, so that end is in a nice solid bearing. That's good. On this end, I screwed this board to my workbench, very high tech. There was a small hole in the end, but it wasn't big enough. So I drilled it out and tapped it for this size of bolt and then stuck a bolt in there with the end cut off. So I can stick that in the drill. <laughs> Yep. So that's how that'll spin. But here's the thing. I have two sizes of carrier bearing. This one, too small. This is a one inch and it was too big. So I took a piece of one inch pipe, a little tiny piece, cut it off, pounded it in there, and then like this, it's not quite big enough to fit yet. I just have been, it's almost perfect. <laughs> it fits on th over the threads, but not the rest of it yet. But that might might, might do. See, look at that. Boom. How precision is that? All we have to do here is put that on there. <laughs> now we have a high-tech version of the North Idaho Wave.
once again, the North Idaho lathe was a success. Took a, uh, I don't know, inch and a quarter hexagonal piece of steel and made it into a one inch round piece of steel. <laughs> it's nice and smooth too. Yep, and the sprocket fits on there perfectly, right about where it needs to go. Bearing fits on there. And then now that takes care of two of my bearings and the lubricated chain case all in one, then all I need is to mount this bearing, which is already, uh, you know, it's a good bearing. I just have to mount it and then just have to modify this mounting bracket and put a new bearing there. And then uh, chop the shaft off here wherever we need it and we'll be kind of back in business. That looks really good. Yeah. Way more roomy for sure. We're working away in the garage. Came outside. First snow of the year. Oh yeah. <laughs> Time to get sideways in our builds. This new piece looks really good. Yeah, I think it looks better than the old one did. Yeah, I do too. Because this is a little higher. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than have it like go at a weird angle, I just went like straight and then one bend down. Before, I just had this uh, hydraulic caliper that was an extra one off the Barbie car and that worked just fine. Um, but it was mounted up here. Um, now that I have the chain case, that's where the original snowmobile brake was mounted, but it was mechanical. And since we already have the whole hydraulic set up, might as well use it, because it's better anyway. Um, so what I did is adapted, it's a, it's a hybrid, it's half of the caliper from the Barbie car. And then this half is all the original with the original snowmobile brake pad in there. And it's the extra caliper for yeah, the Barbie right, car. The We're not sacrificing one, yeah. the Barbie car for this. Right. Barbie car is still fun. Uh, so yeah, the bolt pattern didn't match. So I uh, used one bolt hole here and then the other one, I just put the bolt past down here. Um, and then I just made this little bracket that, um, you know, connects the two. And that bracket on the back side has a pin that goes into the other hole on this so that it can't rotate. Pretty spiffy, eh? Nice. It's coming together, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had to rebuild all of the complicated parts of it, but uh, it didn't actually take as long as I thought it would, and the end result is way better than it was before. Oh, yeah. It even looks better. Oh yeah, and you got some really nice brackets. This piece is longer and more roomy, more yeah. room here. I mean, yeah. it's it so just much better. too. Like before it just looks so cluttered up here with everything there. Yeah. You, you, you. This is looking so dope. 
Power Wheels box gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Bought a boom. Yeah, it's uh, starting to take shape. I was originally thinking of having it go all the way back under here. Uh, and I'm not going to do that for two reasons. One, it wouldn't really gain a lot of volume for the amount of extra work to make it all fit there. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, when it's in winter mode, snow bike mode, uh, a major problem with snowmobiles uh, is that the floorboards always get packed full of snow and then your feet slide around on them. So this, I want it to be able to have the snow just shed through it. So I want where the main part that you stand, I want it to be porous so all the snow will just go through. So this, this section will just be like a metal grid uh, that you stand on, but the snow or dirt or mud or whatever will go right through it. And we get to see what the capacity is too. Yeah, yeah, we'll just take a gallon jug and fill it up and see how many gallons it takes. Right, gallon number one, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, if that's the only place it leaks, that's totally fine because I need to cut one of those ends off. Gallon number four. Full to the brim, just under three and a half gallons. Nice. That's not bad. That'll get us places. Yeah. Getting closer and closer to party time. Yep. The fuel can come out now. The fuel can go in. Now we just need uh, something to keep it from coming out when you tip over. <laughs> <laughs> that really polishes it off. That looks good. Yeah. In true grind hard plumbing fashion using plumbing pieces for the gas cap. Mm-hmm. You know, got to uh, go back to our roots that don't exist. <laughs> if you're wondering about our plumbing background, check the channel trailer. <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> day 11 or 12 of the scooter just since the last video so a lot of work has gone into this bad boy <laughs> and she's about to get her first start with the new carbs right hopefully worked yeah it sounds those mean. carburetors are way better <laughs> <coughs> you i was supposed to build a foot platform but now i don't know if i can wait <laughs> i think i have to just rip it <laughs> i have faith in you in what 
<laughs> and being able to build it first. Before I drive it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. It's probably worth it. Probably. <laughs> it won't take very long. Nah. Looks perfect. Yeah, I think it's gonna be ideal. It's super lightweight. It's uh, very, very grippy. the bike out sounds like it's running pretty good it's time to take her out for a rip <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> required but holy crap <laughs> it's everything I dreamed of <laughs> it rips oh dude so that other clutch was uh, really loose in its in the spring loaded part of it um, and also I was an idiot and didn't tighten this nut so I lost it on the way out there um, so I just swapped it out for a different clutch that I had we'll see how it goes now it should be should be better <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow, he just dug a trench. Okay, oh we need a better tire. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to run. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. tire is just spinning, dude. That is so cool. <laughs> Are you ready for the ride of your life? Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you get your leg in the clutch? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I probably am okay. Let's see it. Oh, that is a gnarly. Oh. <laughs> oh you wanna hold the bike? Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> it's not bleeding. It just, yeah. it just uh, rug burned the whole back of your calf. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why we need a guard on that there uh, clutch. <laughs> well, that thing's amazing. I'm gonna take a little break. <laughs> Feels like I got punched by Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>